Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, you guys are getting a thrift to treasure. It has been a bit, but today I'm taking five items that I recently thrifted and I am turning them into beautiful treasures. And I cannot wait to hear what you guys all think. For our very first upcycle today, from a recent thrift haul when I was picking at the Goodwill bins, I found this lid. You guys, the patina on here is just absolutely beautiful. One thing I'm trying to do is use up all my scrap items from my crafting stash. So I found this little thankful. It fit perfect. The other item I'm using is Morocco, which is a paint inlay from IOD. There's two ways to use a paint inlay. You can either use it in a top coat or in paint. I don't want to hide this beautiful patina, so I am applying one even coat of Big Top. I'm then laying down the paint inlay, taking my fingers and rubbing out all the wrinkles and really embedding that paint inlay into this lid. From here, what I'm doing is taking my misting bottle and I am misting the entire piece again, taking my finger and rubbing it very thoroughly to embed that paint in that top coat. From here, with the top coat, what I do suggest and what the IOD sisters suggested is taking your uh, heat gun and giving it a zap. And you don't want to have this too long, but you'll notice that the paper starts turning like a, like a lighter color, like it's drying. So I put down my uh, heat gun, I let it dry a little bit more on its own, kind of cool off, zap it one more time, and then we are set to remove the paint inlay. All the products used in today's video you can find on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. Now that it's completely dry, you can see that the paper is very light. I am taking my misting bottle and I am completely misting that paper. And then from the very edge, I am just pulling the paper. And as you can see, the paint inlay is completely embedded into that top coat. This is so satisfying, you guys. I This is my favorite part of using a paint inlay is pulling back that paper and seeing that beautiful image in your uh, piece that you're applying it to. From here, I do recommend just setting this aside, letting it dry very thoroughly before we move on to the next step. I found this thankful, I think I got it at Hobby Lobby a while ago. What I do want to do is paint this white. The patina of that top is very dark and so is the paint inlay. So I really want this thankful to pop. And again, I'm trying to use up my excess uh, products and I have a quarter of a can of white spray paint and this is a perfect opportunity to use it up. I do apply several coats of the spray paint onto the thankful before I'm completely satisfied and then I also seal it with a clear coat. Now it's time to apply that thankful but before I do even though I embedded this Morocco paint inlay in a top coat I always recommend sealing it one more time. So I'm applying one even coat of Big Top again and I'm going to set this aside, let it dry, and then we're gonna come back and we are going to attach the thankful. My go-to adhesive is Type Bond Quick and Thick and I use this for my molds and I love using it for my wood pieces that I attach as well. So just like I do with my molds, I apply just a little bit here and there. Then I take my finger and I smooth it out to the edges. That has or allows me to have better control and you don't get a lot of seepage. So when you put on, whether it be your mold or this thankful sign, you don't get a lot of gushing of the type bond. Um, yes, it does uh, dry clear, but you can still see a lot of that excess if you have it like oozing out of the sides. So just like I said, gives you a better control. Once you get that all on there, then I just lay it down. I figure out where, um, you know, I centerize the thankful and I lay it down. 
I absolutely love that pop of white against that beautiful patina and the Morocco background. For Upcycle 2, I recently thrifted these two little drawers. They definitely caught my eye right away. Anytime I can find little containers like this that I can stack on top of each other, I'm grabbing them. For today's Upcycle, I decided to add a pop of color. And from what everything I'm reading, blues are definitely making a comeback. And I love Bohemian Blue, and I think it is absolutely gorgeous for the holidays. So I can use it in my holiday decor in my booth. I can also then slide it right into spring as well. So if they don't sell in, you know, through the holidays, they can definitely go into my spring decor. Uh, so I am applying one even coat of Bohemian Blue to the entire piece. I am painting um, the bottom and all four sides. I want it to leave the inside the neutral or natural wood. I like that contrast and I think it's going to look just perfect. I'm going to let this dry and then I want to distress it back a bit just to pull back some of that wood. And on the one little drawer, there is a little heart with uh, two letters and an and sign. And I want to make that pop a little bit too. I'm taking them outside and I'm using my hand sander. A uh, hand sander has several different speeds. I want to put this on one. Uh, it gives me a little bit more control over the sanding motion. That way it's not going full bore and it takes off too much of the paint. I just wanna sand here and there and here is what the final outcome looks like. So now all I need to do is seal the DIY paint with Big Top. And if you've been following me for a while, you'll know if you use DIY paint, it can be reactivated with water. So you always want to seal it with some type of top coat or a wax. And today I am using Big Top. This was such a simple and easy flip by adding a bit of color. And again, it just will be a perfect pop of color in my booth. For upcycle number three, I found these four little containers. And again, they were from my last thrifting adventure. My vision here is I had a bunch of these bottle brush trees from spring. I know it's kind of crazy. They had bottle brush trees in the spring like Easter section, I grabbed them all. I love the mint and I think it's going to be a perfect addition um, with that Morocco uh, paint and lay. I think it's going to be the perfect vignette. So my vision for the containers are it, is this. I am using the lock and key mold and I want to use four of the different locks. And I'm using the IOD air dry clay. I'm putting that in each of the molds. I'm going to attach those molds to these containers and then paint them white. And I think it will be super cute um, by putting the trees inside those containers. Now, if you haven't used the air dry clay before, it's super easy. I always recommend keeping any of your excess air dry clay in a plastic bag, like a Ziploc. 
And then I recommend taking a piece of paper towel and folding it into four and then putting that in there. It really helps prevent your air dry clay from drying out. And then what I do is just take a piece of the air dry clay and I apply chunks of it into each of the molds. You don't want to uh, pull a little bit and put a little bit in at a time. You want one nice solid piece and then put it in, squish it in there and wipe away the excess. And with that micro rim edge, it makes it so easy to just use your thumb and get rid of any of that excess clay and put it right back in the bag. From there, I use gravity to pull all the molds out and then they will be ready to adhere to whatever project you're working on. I'm breaking out my favorite type bond, quick and thick. And again, just like I did with the thankful uh, little sign, I am applying just a little bit of the type bond taking my finger, rubbing it to the edges. Again, you don't want it um, to be overflowing. You just want enough on there and it really helps control it if you use your finger to wipe it right to the edges. And then from there, I just apply it to each of my projects and the key to applying it is just put it down and then I recommend, um, because there is so much beautiful detail in these molds, you don't want to put a lot of pressure on these, but you, when you lay them down, I just make sure that I get a good adhesion, and then I go around the entire edge or perimeter of the mold, and then I tap just to make sure it's all on there securely. I do leave it laying flat to dry, and then after a little bit, I double check it. So I go back to my mold, make sure it's still all completely down around the edges. If not, I just lightly tap it and then make sure it goes back down. And I do that to all of them and leave them dry overnight. Now that they've dried overnight, I am using Vintage Linen from DIY Paint. And the DIY Paint is a clay-based paint which can uh, be applied to virtually any surface. What I did notice about this is that it did, it looked like it got a little streaky, like the um, application was not perfect. Um, typically, I use like galvanized. This is like more of like a tin. Uh, so what I did is I set it aside, I let it dry very thoroughly, I then applied a second coat and let that dry very thoroughly and then I sealed it. And I'm sealing it with Big Top. So my vision here is I want to seal it, let that completely dry. Then I wanna go in with some dark wax and really make all the detail of that lock and key really pop. And then the actual little containers have some grooves as well. So I wanna get that dark wax in all of that detail. The big top is completely dry and I am using DIY's dark wax and a waxing brush. What I do recommend is just taking a little bit of that wax and putting it on like the lid. Uh, I use this pretty often, but I'm sure I'm contaminating because I dip my brush back and forth. Because DIY products are all natural and only limited ingredients, you definitely don't want to contaminate your containers. Um, like with the paint, it can start smelling foul. It's still totally okay to use. It just has a funky smell. And same with the wax. So I always just recommend scooping a little bit, putting it on the lid, or in another container and then applying the wax. But I'm using my waxing brush and I'm just really getting into all those details, taking a piece of paper towel and wiping away the excess. And then what I do recommend when you use the wax is let it cure for 30 days uh, and then it will be rock solid. I decided to try to use Great Stuff, which is an expanding foam, to hold the trees in these containers. Initially, I squirted some in, I plopped the tree in, and I'm gonna show you in a minute, that did not work. What I'm doing here, and this did work, is I'm squirting a little in, and then from here, it will expand. I will chop off the top, and then we'll add the trees. 
here is what it looks like after I cut away some of that expanded foam and I am squirting in some tight bond. I am also applying a bit of tight bond to the very bottom of the tree. Then I'm taking the tree itself and I am going to squish it right into that great stuff foam. Kind of push it down a bit to get it in there and it it definitely worked. Um, what I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to add just a little bit of filler around the edges to make it look all pretty. For upcycle number four, I found these two little wood boxes and because I was very inspired from the drawers that we did earlier, I am going to recreate these into little drawers. I also was going to leave them all chippy white just the way they were, but as I was removing all this stuff that they had glued on, Oh my gosh, they used so much hot glue, you guys. I did use my heat gun and heated it up to try to loosen it, to try to get it off. It just left, oh gosh, it was like, it did not look good. So I had to paint them in the end, even though I really liked how chippy and pretty they looked at this point. Now I'm painting them vintage linen. I want this all to go in the same vignette. So anytime I'm doing these thrift to treasure videos, my ultimate goal is to take all of the items that I'm flipping and try to put them in the same little vignette area so that it's very easy for me to just slide them into my booth. So because I did use vintage linen on the other project, I thought this would be just the perfect color and it actually almost matches perfectly to what is on there now. I am applying just one even coat. I thought about going in and distressing them, but in the end, I thought they just looked really good the way they were. So no distressing at this point. I also painted the bottoms and then I'm coming back and I am going to seal them with Big Top and then we're going to apply a handle. I talked about how I'm going through my stash of items. I thrifted that little box of handles and I grabbed two of them out of there. Now, this is where, you guys, if you do this at home, do not follow my direction. I tried to eye this up. I am taping and I am trying to, yes, just do not do what I do. Do what I recommend. I would definitely get a ruler out and measure where the center was because I was off just a little bit on both of these. It, not bad, not bad at all, but just enough that, yeah, I would definitely recommend measuring. For my fifth and final upcycle, I recently thrifted this little silver teapot. Super cute, but it was missing the top. I'm using the lock and key mold and I am creating a little top for it. I am also using one of the molds uh, for a design on the front. I'm applying both with tight bond and I am going to let this dry overnight. Once it dries overnight, then I'm going to come back and we are going to paint it. So I broke out vintage linen and in my mind, I wanted to paint this apothecary. So I 
don't know. After I got like right here, I was like, oh, that's right. I was going to use apothecary because I wanted it to be um, like the kind of like that minty green from the trees. But I said, oh, well, I'm going with it. And I am painting the whole thing vintage linen. I applied two even coats to the whole piece let it dry very thoroughly and then we're going to come back and we're going to wet distress some of the um, areas where um, there's a lot of detail and design. If you haven't wet distressed before just go and grab a damp rag and any of the areas where there is a raised surface I just take it and I rub over that raised surface and until it, enough of it shows that um, it, you can see like some of that silver and that tarnish come through. After you get done wet distressing it, I do recommend let it dry very thoroughly and then go back and seal it. And I just seal it with the big top and then I'm gonna come back and I am going to use that dark wax again to bring out all that beautiful detail. Initially, I thought about just applying it to the top and to the actual piece on the front. Then I decided, nope, I'm going to go all in and I am adding the dark wax all over the entire piece. So I apply a nice even coat of the dark wax and then I take my piece of paper towel, wipe away all the excess and then it really goes into all that beautiful detail. And you guys, I absolutely love how this turned out. It's been a bit, you guys, since I did a thrift to treasure. I hope you enjoyed it today and were inspired by one of the projects. My ultimate goal today was just to pull five items out of my stash and then really dive into my crafting stash and use up some of the items that I have that have been sitting around for a bit. So I had a lot of fun doing that and I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, again, with all my vignettes, I really try to make them all go together. Like all five flips, I want them to go into a vignette together. So I always am thinking about that when I'm picking colors or what items that I'm using. And definitely one of the items inspires the entire vignette. So the little sign really drove what colors I chose for the rest of the items. Well, I hope you enjoyed it and I can't wait to hear what you guys think about uh, today's thrift flips. But I want to mention that my Creative Network membership group will be closing on October 31st. So you guys still have time to get into that. And then Friday's video, I have another five items ready to go. <laughs> I actually picked out 10 items right away. And um, there might be actually a couple extras because as I was looking, I'm like, oh, this would go with that and this would. So Friday's video, I think it's going to be just another thrift to treasure. Um, so I'm very excited to show you what I have in store for you. I definitely am going to start leaning more towards the holidays because that's where my booth is going. I had planned on getting all of my, my booth flips done, but with my back really bothering me, I have been just really on, you know, keeping it on the down low, you guys. I have been resting and just trying to, I'm kind of feeling like a homebody. I haven't done a lot just because my back has been hurting so much. So, but I am on the mend, being really positive. I have great days and then I have like a morning like today where I woke up and it hurt a bit. So, Anywho, you guys have yourselves a great week and we will see you Friday. Remember tonight I will be going live and I am going to do a chip brush Santa. So definitely inspired by Debbie Beard's chandelier. I hope to see you guys joining me this evening. All right, well you take care and we'll see you Friday. Bye.